Hi everyone, welcome to the Factory Automation Competition Program presented by the REC Foundation. My name is Dylan Caudell, I am a Senior Program Manager for the REC Foundation and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the FAC competition and program, um, giving you a little bit of ins and outs about it and hopefully answering some questions. All right, taking a step back, um, you may have heard before if you're in the STEM field or um, are involved in STEM that there is a large job gap that is now here. Um, over 2.5 million jobs are going unfilled that are STEM jobs. Um, so everything from robotic technicians to engineers to maintenance techs, I mean, there's so many different jobs out there that are just related to STEM that are going unfilled. So the REC Foundation set out to solve that problem. So we aim to create workforce development education, meaning to take students from high school, um, give them some skills that they would need to go into a manufacturing career or a robotics career or a maintenance career, um, and giving them the, just the fundamentals to go down that pathway and to educate them on what those jobs are actually like. Um, the main goal is to fill that, that skills gap, um, help provide more workers in the relative workforce that need these skills. So what, what is our program? What do we come up to help solve that problem? Uh, so this is the factory automation competition program. Um, it's a classroom based competition where students will build uh, something like what you see there on the screen. Um, after they're given various challenges and activities, They'll, they'll build them, they will see how well they, they did it, um, being measured on a few different factors, and then compete with other programs across the world, across the US, across their state. Um, however, they really wanna, wanna look at the competition and see how they did amongst other programs, other classes, other students um, alike to see who can do something more effectively or more efficiently, and then go back and problem solve and make it better and better and better. A little bit about the competition. So as I said, there's various goals um, and challenges. We call these phases. So a program can work through different phases um, of a work cell build or of the competition that scale and get harder and harder and harder as the students dive into them and as they look for a harder challenge um, while being able to go back and, and modify and you know get their first, second, and third phase um, really good or you know try to perfect it get it as smooth as possible uh, before moving on so this is really fun for students uh, to, to become first in their class or first in their state um, whatever they want by refining these metrics um, uh, in, in the challenge in the game we won't go too much into that because it's not released yet um, but that's the the goal of the competition So these are the phases for a first year or, or kind of an example that it could be. Um, so competition phase one, can you sort all of the red discs to a loading zone and then sort all of the blue and then sort all of the green. Um, and then once you do that, uh, how long did it take you to do it? Did you do it successfully with all of the discs, um, et cetera? There's different metrics there, like we said. Then you can move on to phase two, which is delivering them now in stacks of three. So you still got to put them in zone one needs all the red discs, zone two needs all the blue discs, and zone three needs all the green discs. But now you have to stack them in stacks of three and deliver them in stacks of three. So it's a little more challenging. You may have to integrate some more um, actuators or different systems on your work cell to make this easier or happen in a shorter amount of time. Uh, this is a neat slide here. This kind of just shows some of the movement from the FAC program or the V5 uh, work cell uh, and compares it to an industry type robot. So as you can see it's a very similar motion. Um, you can very easily correlate and see, okay, what I'm doing in the classroom is very similar to what they're doing in industry, just smaller scale. The robot functions very similar. You can see the joints moving. Uh, programming would be the same type of logic. Um, obviously the, the code is going to look a little different, but you can get the, the general points of what a factory robot is doing 
with a robot in your in your classroom and then for the the competition so there's another look at one of the stem lab builds um, or just a, a you know the smaller work cell build you can see there's conveyor belts on there a couple different types there's uh, the the disc we were talking about red blue and green there's a kind of feeder system different buttons different sensors um, you see the robot arm there I mean there's all kinds of mechanical aspects to this build and then you throw in the sensor and uh, system controls and then you really start to dive into it all right so the stem labs i mentioned before these are kind of like curriculum type activities to guide students um, kind of from point a all the way through point b which would be a classroom competition um, and then the fac competition so uh, you'll learn a lot they're they're very much self-paced but um, it includes all the builds um, and the additional supporting information that's needed to be successful in these different uh, topic areas. So of course we start out with what is industrial robotics, uh, then we go into safety, manual robotic arm movements, then we dive into programming with arm movements, using variables, using end effectors. What is an end effector? Uh, dropping off objects, palletizing, transporting objects, you know, moving things around, different conveyor systems, um, then adding sensors to them, cooperative systems, you know, multiple work cells coming together. And then a, the classroom competition where you'd be challenged to put all this together and come up with a solution. Uh, let's take a look at a few of the STEM labs. I'm gonna play a short video for each one. I'll give you just a quick overview of what would be learned in that STEM lab and what the outcomes would be. In this lab, you will be introduced to the world of industrial robotics. Industrial robots include systems like robotic arms, which can move in several different directions and can be programmed to carry out many different types of tasks. Some of these tasks include sorting different products or even welding material together. Industrial robots are beneficial because they can work in very dangerous areas where threats of explosions or other extreme hazards are present and dangerous to humans. To begin this lab, you will be guided through building your very own V5 robotic arm. After the V5 robotic arm is constructed, you will update the firmware and determine the mastering values for the V5 robotic arm. You will also learn about the four main components of an industrial robot the manipulator, the controller, the human interface device, and the power supply. After learning about the components that make up industrial robots, you will explore the four types of automation and the five types of facilities where industrial robots are found and used. After you have explored these concepts, you will take a survey to record your attitudes about topics and careers in industrial robotics. As you, as you can see, a very good start into industrial robotics. Uh, you learn a lot about the kit in front of you and the arm that you're working with, but it also goes a step farther and it teaches you about the different facilities and what makes up an industrial robotic system and you know those those core concepts that kind of build on what we're what we're doing here with the V5 work cell and the factory automation program. Here's another one for you. In this lab, you will be introduced to how the V5 robotic arm moves in three-dimensional space. This movement will be recorded using an X, Y, and Z coordinate system. In order to move within the workspace, robots need to have a force applied on them. This force comes from devices called actuators. Actuators are devices that cause an action. Some examples of actuators are hydraulics, pneumatics, and motors. The V5 arm uses motors as its actuators. You will learn more about these actuators throughout the lab. You will start this lab by manually moving the V5 robotic arm to view the displayed X, Y, and Z values. After learning about how industrial robots move in a workspace, 
you will be faced with a challenge. The challenge is to document the X, Y, and Z values of the four core locations that will be used in the following labs. All right, let's take a look at one more. In this lab, you will add a disk feeder to the work cell and learn how to use Boolean variables. As products move through the manufacturing process, they pass from work cell to work cell. Within automated manufacturing, these work cells can function as cooperative systems. For cooperative systems to function together, they must have some form of communication. This communication might utilize a wired connection between inputs and outputs, a wireless system, or use sensors to communicate when an object is passed from one work cell to the next. To begin this lab, you will create a project to move two green disks using sensor values and the disk feeder. Using the disk feeder allows multiple disks to the work cell in an autonomous fashion so that a disk does not need to be manually placed onto the entry conveyor each time. The first green disk will be picked up and dropped off to a known location using the V5 robotic arm, while the second green disk is diverted off of the exit conveyor. You will be introduced to using Boolean variables in your VexCode V5 project to track if a green disk has already been picked up and placed. This allows any other green disks introduced via the disk feeder to be diverted off of the exit conveyor. For the final activity of the lab, you will be challenged to sort colored disks. You will use either one or two systems to pick up and drop off one of each colored disk to a known location and then divert off any additional disks. Ah, very cool. That's one of my favorite labs there. So as you can see, you can start very, very basic and simple and get quite complicated at the end with sorting disk and Boolean variables and um, different conveyor systems in and out and counting and all kinds of awesome, awesome things you can do with the V5 work cell and the FAC program. Okay, so just a little bit of summary here. Uh, remember, it is a classroom-based competition, so all of it can be done um, in a classroom. You don't got to worry about traveling to compete or anything like that. Uh, challenges come out each year um, is, the, is the plan. And the best part is this is already available for pre-order. You can pre-order it on the vexrobotics.com website. And you can also get access to the STEM labs there. All of the STEM labs are already up. They're live. Um, they're updated uh, every time we, we make a little tweak or change, but they are really, really good. Um, I encourage anybody to jump on the Vex Robotics uh, website and check out the STEM labs. Uh, go through, click on some of them. You can watch the additional videos. You can see the different builds, um, but it will give you a really good insight to the program, the platform, and then you can apply all those skills for the competition. So I hope to see you all in the coming year, in this coming season, in the factory automation competition. Um, and good luck. Thank you.